Hey, welcome back, Velocity fans, Volume 2, like, Velocity, there it is. Hey, I know it's been a couple of weeks since I posted anything. Uh, spring has sprung. It's uh, early early May as I tape this. I'm out for our uh, evening flight. Um, yeah, uh, work's been busy, family's been busy, but it's all good. Uh, currently at about uh, 13 hours in the airplane. Um, messing with the auto autopilot as we speak right now, uh, trying to get that tuned in, but... Um, Got the wheel pants installed. This is the second flight with the wheel pants. I'll show you more detail about that coming up. But uh, yeah, welcome back. Glad to, glad you joined. Look, another gratuitous takeoff uh, clip. But I've got a new camera angle since uh, the last time we spoke. So I'll walk you through this takeoff. What I'm doing here is preparing the airplane for takeoff, making sure that the flight controls are correct. You saw the elevator move. The speed brake slash flap is fully retracted, fuel pump on. Um, the altimeters are set correctly. And I'm clear of traffic. So I'm taxiing out. Uh, the airplane is rather difficult to steer on the ground, you, and that's uh, pretty apparent. <laughs> what I'm doing here is now searching for that center line uh, at slow speed, and once I find the center line and convince that the nose wheel is aligned, I slowly advance the steer lock lever, and now push the throttle in full forward for 100% power. So with this fixed pitch propeller, the initial acceleration is rather anemic and it takes quite a bit of time and runway to get to 35, 40 knots. Once I get to that point, the acceleration picks up rather rapidly and also at about 40 knots, the rudders begin to be effective and it's quite a bit easier to steer and maintain that uh, center line. So here I've hit uh, about 70 knots and begin back pressure and bring the airplane, bring the nose up and the airplane into the air. After I hit about four or 500 feet above ground level AGL, I pull the power back to about 85% and save a little bit of gas and wear and tear on the engine. This is one of those there I was stories. So yesterday I took a flight up north, Van Wert Airport, landed, looking for some gas, parked the airplane, it's too late in the evening, nobody was around, regardless. Decided I needed a stretch. Unbuckle, open the door, look back into the airplane, which I'll show you in a second. And back here is filled with what appeared to be smoke. Holy smokes, as they say. Well, after a moment of panic, <laughs> trying to figure out what might be on fire, or at least smoking, I thought, hey, I've got two fire extinguishers on this airplane, one in the front seat, one behind the seat. So I go for the one behind the seat. As some of you may have guessed, that's right. So <laughs> lesson learned, secure your fire extinguishers. This guy happened to be rolling around back here somewhere. The pin got dislodged and the trigger must have been pushed up against something. Needless to say, there was a cloud of fire extinguishant in the back of the airplane and boy it sure looked like smoke lesson learned secure your fire extinguishers i'm gonna freeze the video right here and add some additional commentary yeah you're right that's a kitchen type fire extinguisher it's not a halon faa approved fire extinguisher which i have in the front um in the front of the seat the intent with this one being back there is if I'm on the ground and I have a brake fire or something smoldering in the engine compartment, I can grab this and address it, right? Um, no intention to use it during when well, the airplane's closed up during flight. The other comment is, uh, right, the rear seats are removed and those blue pieces of foam are just blue pieces of foam. I'm often back there examining something, working on something on the front side of the firewall, and that just helps uh, protect the knees. <laughs> Yeah, a little bit more comfortable. So I just leave them back there. So that's what you're seeing in this uh, this set of images. All right, Zulu time, uh, 040923. At uh, full power in 87% at uh, 4800. Color rating, um, 135 knots.
Try and see what we get up to here. Mark 44. Right at 2690 RPM. 90% power at this altitude. Indicating about 148. 150. 50, about 151 seems to be where it wants to be. All right, let's slow it down. That's 167 true. Yeah, I think it's a 169 airplane. Welcome to the home office. I'm taking a cue from the Fly Safe Scott Manley guy who does a lot of YouTube videos on space and stuff, but he's out getting his pilot's license, so kudos to you, Scott. It's pretty cool. I'm in front of my handy dandy, well used whiteboard doing some comparison, some performance comparisons between the velocity and a, a close cousin to the velocity in terms of performance the SR 71 Blackbird. Now, as far as speed, perhaps the 71 can outrun me. As far as altitude, perhaps the SR-71 can outclimb me, but fuel burn, oh no, I'm sipping the fuel. But as far as maintenance per flight hour, keep these airplanes in the air, I have to say it's, it's about the same thus far. Mm -hmm. In volume one, you probably noticed that I already have a nose wheel pant installed on the front of the airplane. So what comes next? Main wheel pants. Almost done. Nobody wears khakis anymore. So I did us all a favor and paused the video while I installed the two halves of the co-pilot side wheel half, front and rear, obviously. Uh, there's some bracketry on this side of the gear leg that uh, secures the wheel half, excuse, excuse, <laughs> that secures the wheel pants and also an extension on the uh, outboard portion of the axle that secures the outboard portion of the wheel pants. Then after about 20 hours of 3D printing, Uh, I created this, which sadly I had to saw in half uh, this afternoon to get it to fit. And they are, uh, they form, these two halves form an interse aerodynamic intersection fairing between the gear leg and the wheel pant assembly to smooth the airflow. So um, this fits rather nicely, pleased with that. Uh, next step, I suppose, is to lay glue this in place. I think I will actually keep the PLA 3D material in situ here, and then lay two or three uh, layers of carbon or fiberglass over the top to make it more permanent. But uh, yeah, so that's this. Here's a better and close up view of the 3D printed intersection fairing, right? See how that reasonably nicely conforms to the complex curves here, the wheel pant and also around the, the gear leg. Um, right, so like the rest of the airplane, the wheel pants are in primer, still require a fair amount of fine finishing work to do uh, before they're ready for paint. And before you ask, these things are called Clecos. These are just uh, temporary fasteners that are a little bit quicker to operate than, uh, than a screw, and they, uh, they work well. So somewhat of an interesting story on how I developed this aerodynamic complex shaped fairing between the major parts here. Uh, credit goes out to another YouTuber, uh, Superfast Matt. He's a car guy, but anyways, Superfast Matt a couple of months ago put out a video about using um, the LiDAR uh, in, your, in a modern iPhone. Uh, facial recognition LiDAR system to generate a point cloud to do a 3D scan of some rudimentary shapes, which is what I have here. And um, with quite a bit of effort, I managed to get that to work. Brought the point cloud into some uh, point cloud cleanup software and did all that rigmarole. then exported that into SOLIDWORKS, and then within SOLIDWORKS generated a 
rough model of the wheel pan, at least this portion, as well as the gear leg. And then finally created some uh, lofts of the two, intersecting the two profiles of the gear leg and, and the, the wheel pan itself to, to get this final shape. And then lastly, send that to the 3D printer. And again, it took about 19 hours for this to, to generate, but um, all told, probably 30 or 40 hours at least in developing these pieces. Right, it would have been much more simpler and efficient to simply take modeling clay, form it into a rough shape or a shape I'm looking for, and then apply a glass cloth over the top of that. But no, that would have been too simple. Had to go the high tech and far more frustrating method of using all this silly technology to get, uh, to get a plastic part. Look, another new camera angle. Here I'm on short final for runway 27. I think this was in Stark County. Uh, um, airspeed's probably uh, 80. And uh, as I cross the threshold, pull the power all the way back. And uh, just trying to hunt for the runway at about 5 degrees of pitch. And this one started out really great. In fact, I touched down right about here. And then subconsciously, I hit the brakes, which... <laughs> immediately brought the nose down and we get the bounce but overall pretty decent landing here's another approach and landing uh, this one happens to be my very first landing on runway 8 eastbound uh, here I'm back at my home airport India 17 Hartzell you can see in this frame that the flap slash speed brake is fully deployed um, the red lights just to the left of the runway are the VASI, which is a visual glide slope. A little below glide slope, and that's intentional, this airplane. But yeah, crossing the threshold, power all the way back to idle. Again, fishing for the runway at about 5 degrees of pitch. And this one I do bounce a little bit. I, it's interesting to watch these videos, um, learn. That's why <laughs> I do these things, uh, how to improve. Uh, I see that I didn't really have a great deal of back pressure or elevator deflection right uh, as the nose wheel came down, so I'll work on that going forward. Here's that same landing, but uh, I start this clip much earlier in the uh, approach sequence. Like I said, I talked to myself quite a bit. Hearts with Echo Traffic Experimental. Niner zero two Sierra Charlie on the downwind for zero eight Hertzel. Check fuel computer. All right. Minimum. Got it. All right, we're a beam uh, midpoint. Low enough, so flap will be deployed now. Coming down. Flaps down. And pattern altitude. Give me a little bit more up trim here, indicating Indy, 80. Might make out the wind sock, but... Yeah, here I'm checking to see if there's any, what the wind is. Um, look, trying to find the wind sock. Could be the first landing on 08. Yeah, mentioned that earlier, first, uh, not that it makes much difference, but uh, I do keep track of these things. So first landing on 8. Indicating 79. Not sure who we are, but it's me. A little bit more power. Airspace. I am making a final check for traffic when I say airspace. Make sure the runway's clear. All right, so thick with traffic. Prime on all 902 Sierra Charlie. Check fuel computer. Turning final for 08 Hertz. Yeah, that business with the fuel computer, the fuel sloshes around and um, it occasionally will give a low indication even though that's not the case. Um, it's a little bug I need to squish at some point in the future.
Yeah, watch my eyes. <laughs> 83 indicated. High above the five slope here. Yeah, at this point I was a little high, right? So I'm pulling the power and back. Now we're little. aiming for that eight. Pulling the power back a little sooner to uh, get online and then eventually below the FASI glide slope. There's the FASI. There it is. 80. Right on speed. There's that eight. Aiming for it. Ah, uh, we got this. Again, who's we? Bay power out. All the way out. All the way out. Good. Looking good. I do talk to myself. Not bad for a first. Oh, got this one. Nicely. Okay. Steer brake back. Steer lock back. All right. Made the turn off. Excellent. They get excited about these Check things. Check fuel level. Try maybe give this one more. All right. Exiting. Cool. Good one. That about wraps it up for volume two. Thanks everybody for watching. Really appreciate all the likes and the subscriptions and the, and the comments. Um, response has been overwhelming, so I really appreciate that. Now, having said that, let me know what you'd like to see in volume three, what you're curious about, and I'll, uh, I'll try to accommodate. Thanks for watching. Summertime wheel pants.